how does it start this idea of doing architecture in Africa? Uh, well, you know, this, this, this kind of lifelong, um, lifelong missions, they, they just start with, uh, with very uh, banal reasons that, that, that I, 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 I just like Africa and I, um, uh, I have this, this feeling that there is a lot to be learned from that uh, continent and that I have had ever since the beginning. Um, and I, I just wanted to go to a place where it's always uh, beautiful weather. It's that's, that kind of simple, simpleness, the, 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 the reasons behind such decisions. Yeah. So sound sound may be a bit banal, but that's that's how things are, I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a combination of, of of those two things of of um, uh, the like the Germans call it the fan way that you you like to work in an exotic context combined with uh, a mission that uh, that you have the feeling that you need you are needed somewhere in the world in the world to help people and, uh, and in Africa in particular we all. We all seem to pity that continent, and they need our help. Well, if that's really true, that's another thing. But th those those were the drivers at at the beginning, and then well, I've never left the the, the continent since. That's now almost thirty years ago. In which part of Africa? In which part of the continent? Um, well, my the uh, the focus of my work. I mean, it's an enormous continent, so you cannot be everywhere. But yeah. the places that I know well, and I've done a lot of work. Uh, is in, in, in West Africa, in, uh, in Burkina Faso, okay. uh, and in East Africa, in um, uh, Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, Mozambique, Ethiopia. Uh, and of late, we're also quite active in, 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 in Morocco and South Africa. But the, 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 the real, uh, uh, most of the time I spend in Africa, if you would ask me, is, is, uh, is Tanzania. That's, that's a bit my... My second home, you could call okay. it. Uh, <clears throat> is there like a professional reason to Tanzania or, or not? Uh, yes, I think so. Is Tanzania was was uh, less so today, but in the in the eighties and the nineties, it was like a sugar baby of the uh, development aid. Almost all Western countries were were having projects there because it was such a, a peaceful and friendly country. With a with a charismatic president uh, Julius Nyerere, whom everybody liked, so there was a lot of a lot of aid, a lot of interest poured into the country, and um, of course it was also a coincidence because I was working at that time for uh, Lipsmai and Partner, a German mm -hmm. German company who had a quite an Im important office in uh, in Tanzania. So that's that's really how I started there. But it's not only it were not only the Germans. It was it were the Japanese, the Canadians, the the Dutch, the British. Everybody was was having projects in in Tanzania in the eighties and the nineties. Was it was a real get together of of a lot of expertise from from Europe and and America and beyond. You are going to be one of the uh, speakers of the next forum on Africa in Taormina, which will be the sixth and seventh of October this year. And uh, mm -hmm. can you tell us some um, previews of your speech there? Well, that's a, that's a dangerous question because I haven't really started putting up my speech. But the question which will be put on the table there is, um, if I quote it correctly, is to to find uh, common ground for, uh, for for African and European professionals to cooperate on the continent. So in another way than in the past, uh, in the past it was very much aid-oriented. I think now we are getting into a period of more business-oriented relationships, uh, which assume also um, a, a level eyesight. Um, in other words, that we are not looking in, into Africa anymore as, as, the, as the poor place where they need our help, but as the place where there's people who can be our business partners and with whom we can work together and from whom we can also learn certain things. And then in particular, uh, the question thrown to me is that in, in, the, in the realm of, of uh, the city development and, and urban, urban questions, the uh, urbanization in Africa is, 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 is outrageous at this moment. There is no place in the world where, where urbanization is, is, is so fast as in Africa that there are cities there growing like, like seven eight percent a year. It's it's unimaginable, 
and of course that needs that needs attention that needs attention from uh, from local government local local business partners but there might be also a role uh, in it for uh, for partners from from Europe and um, what I understand from one of the reasons behind the the conference is to see uh, why it seems that uh, initiatives from elsewhere, and then now I'm talking about in particular China and India, seem to be more successful in in, in current um, in current business deals in in Africa than Europeans are. So it, it it looks like that Europeans are sort of being caught in this this old attitude of of help and 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 a, well a, a not an equal relationship between Africa and Europe whereas the Chinese and the Indian uh, entrepreneurs and governments they see the relationship with Africa far more as a as an equal a business based uh, relationship and and in 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 on that aspect I want to to focus and then in, in my own field of, of architecture and, and urban development. Uh, I saw on, um, on the website of Archi Africa that uh, this association uh, can help in uh, achieving the uh, UN, um, uh, UN mission to, to give houses and affordable houses in places like Africa. So, what exactly uh, Archi Africa uh, is doing in this direction? Um, well, yes, that, that that might be in 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 the in the uh, mission statement of Archi Africa. Now, it's it's a long throw, I must admit. But the Archi Africa is um, in the first place a network organization with the attention to to bring people together, to bring parties together, with the aim to to give more attention to African architecture as a whole. And of course, uh, in, in, in promoting African architecture and improving African architecture through uh, academic exchange, through uh, education, through professional input, uh, Archi Africa will eventually help in hopefully in, 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 in improving living conditions uh, uh, and thus, thus also working on the UN uh, goals. But in, in the first place, Archi Africa is just a, a, a platform for people to meet, to meet in the flesh and in, in, in conferences, or to meet uh, on, on on the web through uh, through our website and, and database and, and, and newsletters. And I think in, in so far we we, we have a ten years existence. We have this year. It, it looks uh, like we have achieved quite something. Uh, we have been able to bring people together, and that's that's already reaching our main goal. Um, Last year we have uh, handed over the, uh, how do you call it, the, the management and the, propri uh, the, the propriety of, of, of Archi Africa to, um, to our partners in Africa. We, we were initially a Dutch organization with five initial Dutch founders, all architects, and uh, we're all out. I mean, we're still related as advisors and members, but not in the... Uh, in the in the in the future policy of of, of Archi Africa and the future in in general is not in our hands anymore. It's now in the hands of of our African colleagues. By an architecture point of view, uh, what do you find new in uh, in the Ar African architecture? Yeah, it's a that's a very important question and uh, one I'm I have been struggling with for the past thirty years. Uh, because I get this question quite often: is uh, what do you actually learn in Africa, and uh, what is it that that attracts you, and and why do you have so much respect for uh, African architecture? There is only huts there, and there is only poverty. There is only slums, and uh, it's both true. I mean, there is a lot of poverty, but in that in that poverty of 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 many African citizen, you see an enormous creativity, and and power. That uh, that is being tapped to 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 build uh, to build their own cities. I mean, most most African cities are built by the citizens themselves without the intervention of architects or and very very modestly by planners only. And if you see then what they achieve in terms of 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 uh, the quality of their of their living 
environment i mean there are exceptions there are utter slums but they're in general the 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 the, the informal as they call it settlements uh, on the on the periphery of the african cities are are often places where you can live quite well very well sometimes and where there is there is a lot of attention being given uh, to to the public realm to how people come together but also to the individual dwelling and this this creativity and this more loose way of of designing and creating your um, your own spatial environment is something very very distant from what we do in Europe, in particularly my country, where everything is subject to regulations and to formal uh, to formal institutions, where there is very little room left for the uh, for the individual citizen to to create his own living environment. That is one of the, uh, one of the things. Um, another thing I might mention is the temporality of of of, uh, of African architecture is that in in Europe we are always starting from the assumption that we built for a, for a long period that something has to stand for fifty or hundred years and still we do demolish also quite often buildings after twenty years, which is not sustainable at all. Uh, whereas in Africa, uh, traditionally people are building for a much shorter lifespan maybe only for 15 years or, or even shorter, just, just a part of a generation or a part of a lifetime. And, and, and again, that is something we, we've completely forgotten in our, or we have maybe never really known in our European, um, uh, under our European circumstances. And there's something that I, uh, I think is, is worthwhile studying and looking at, is how can you create um, a house or a living environment uh, which is not supposed to stand for a hundred years, but which, which is like maybe a, a piece of clothing or fashion is, is only there for, for, for 10 or 15 years to last. And so there are more and more things. But there's, there's just a few examples of, 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 of issues that I've found in, 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 in my work in Africa that I think are worthwhile deeper study and, 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 and uh, interest from our side. Can you make an, an example of um, an African... Uh, building his own way of uh, his own soul interpretation of house of, of living because of what you said before you said that on the periphery of, uh, of cities of African cities you found very interesting uh, there is lots of space for individuals to build their own houses their own way of living so can you make an example of this well there are there are many examples to be to be mentioned and I must admit that so far I have not been really studying it in, in terms of, of, of doing proper research and, and, and taking dimensions and, 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 and taking a lot of pictures and interviewing people. But uh, an interesting example that has been brought to the fore recently is uh, the, um, uh, the townships and uh, informal settlements around Cape Town in South Africa where uh, people are using... Um, second-hand uh, materials to build, which is paramount in Africa, and they built houses which are incredibly um, joyful to look at. And uh, so, to such an extent, and so much decoration you see, that uh, a famous photographer has, has made a, a photo book uh, on it and has, is promoting this kind of architecture as, as what he calls chic. Okay. The, the the reverse side of poverty that you people have their own res, respect their own environment and even though they have little means they create a living environment which is actually transpiring a lot of optimism and that is that is a nice example I think yeah um, where was this in which country was this in South Africa in the uh, in the Cape Flats in the the the, the periphery of Cape Town uh, Kailitsa is one important uh, uh, informal settlement and uh, the book that was made is called Shack Chic uh, by Fraser Hugh Fraser if I'm not mistaken and it's it's very interesting but it's also at the same time you have to be careful because um, when you start to photograph with these things and promote it as a sort of a kind of a, a human achievement you should never forget that the people are living in these houses are living on the fringe of, of existence they have very very little means so there is also a very bitter side to to this as well okay thank you very much well you're welcome